Wise will be on New Hampshire for the first in a nation primary. Bernie Sanders, fresh off an essential tie slash win, is looking for a real big win tomorrow night. Uh, and he is positioned to do so, has a commanding lead in most polls. His closest competitor, Pete Buttigieg, is now seven points behind. So what happens, though, for the markets? What happens to your portfolio if the market starts to take him seriously. Remember, when Elizabeth Warren was rising in the polls, it did hurt the stock market. Joining me now to discuss the Bonson Group CIO, David Bonson. He's also author, Elizabeth Warren, How Her Presidency Would Destroy the Middle Class and the American Dream. You know, David, I had the, the guy from my pillow on. He had a, one of those book covers. If you did like this, it changed a little bit. You should have had Elizabeth Warren Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, <laughs> yes, yes. I've had a few people suggest that. And a lot of the policies that I walk through in the book, of course, could very well be transposed onto Bernie. But at the time I wrote it, as you know, she was really up She was the a top rocket ship. She yeah. destroyed herself, I think. I mean, you know, she just could have been a little bit more honest about her plans and nothing would have happened. Yeah, I think authenticity <clears throat> still matters to a lot of the voters. And that's where Bernie Sanders' voting block is for as crazy as a lot of his policies are. People don't doubt his own authenticity and consistency. She doesn't have that going for her. As he would say, he wrote the damn bill. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so he went on the honeymoon to Moscow, not yeah. Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Uh, but talk about the threats, because I'm thinking if Bernie Sanders does win big tomorrow night, you know, the market won't go, won't get hammered per se, but I think it becomes a darker cloud and it's something we have to start considering. Um, so forgive me for disagreeing with you, but I want to explain why I actually disagree. I believe that the market, for good or for bad, for right or for wrong, believes that Bernie has a lesser chance of winning against Trump okay. than some of the other candidates. So to the degree that something is happening that might be advancing Bernie's uh, likelihood of capturing the nomination, in theory, the market ought to be more encouraged that it, it enhances President Trump's uh, odds of reelection. And to your point, that's what happened the day after Iowa. It I is. Th I think the uh, Iowa chaos actually, the markets read that as Trump having an even better chance of being reelected, and the markets took off the next day. But I really think that the biggest issue we should expect as market investors is that the market is not going to have any way to price what's really happening until we get closer to the election. February, March, it's way too early. There can be some volatility that gets enhanced around it. And in a lot of ways, it's kind of like you enhance tail risk, meaning the low probability but high risk action. Bernie becomes Coming president is a perfect example of that. But you lower the chances of President Trump losing. What's the risk, though, when you said Elizabeth Warren's policies and or Bernie Sanders would destroy the middle class and the American dream? How? Well, so the book goes into the policy aspects, which we're used to talking about on your show, the cost of the things, the huge social programs, the migration towards socialism. But what I really try to do more in the book is unpack how it undermines the whole idea of the aspirational society. Fundamentally, my biggest problem with Sanders and Warren is cultural and it's moral. I think it takes away the American spirit. She's telling people they cannot get ahead and it's not their fault. They're a victim of some other entity, and I think it's completely untrue. It is basically soft Marxism, and that's what is mostly undermining of the middle class. We'll get through bad policies and taxes right, here and there. Right. That's the stuff that stays with us generationally. And, and lack of accountability. That's right. Yeah. And the notion that it's always someone else's fault. David, great stuff, man. Your books have been fantastic, and yeah. congratulations. Thank you, Charles. Glad you can make it through.